Hey developers, today I'm going to show you the differences between the Composition API, the Options API, the Setup API, and the Hybrid approach. So there's quite a few ways you can create a view app, and I'm going to show you some different ways you can do it, and my opinions on what I think is best and what you should avoid. Hey, and as always, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also a big fan of Vue, React. If you guys like those type of topics, make sure you click that subscribe button and leave a comment below if you want me to do more content in Vue or Svelte or even Web3. I'm actually thinking about some Web3 topics lately, so leave a comment below. But let's just jump into this video and take a look at it. Okay, so here I am in my app and this is using Vue.js 3 and I wanna show you some of the different ways we can create a Vue app nowadays and what I think you should use. So let's first take a look at the Options API. And an Options API looks like this. You essentially have this export default, but you can also use something called define component, and I'll explain that in a minute. And it's essentially an object surrounded by this script tag. You can see here in the options API, we have this data object, and this returns, basically these are gonna be your reactive variables. So anytime anything changes inside this script tag in your template all, at, all the way at the bottom, this will automatically get updated. So then I have a computed property. It's sort of like a getter in Angular, but it's cached and it's reactive. So if any of these values change, the whole computed property gets uh, updated again. And then I have this methods, and this is where you put your methods in. So I just have one called test, which takes this first name and last name and changes it to Bob Smith. So this is a really classic approach to using Vue. I've seen a lot of tutorials using this full name example for computed properties. It's just a very simple way to do it. Now, this is not everything you can put in this export default. There's something called inherit adders. You can do mix-ins. There's a few other things that you can do, but typically in a lot of Vue applications, these are kind of the most important things. You need methods, which you're gonna put in here. You're gonna have your computed properties, which are here and then you have your export default or, or your reactive variables. So what it looks like here, and by the way, I apologize, I'm not doing any CSS in this video. If you want some CSS, I have other videos. I'll go ahead and can click here. You can find an app where I create a full Vue.js application with CSS. But for this one, I just wanna show you, if you click here, it just changes it to Bob Smith. So I, the reason I like this options API, this is essentially what, it, what started with with Vue 2. So if you were in the Vue 2 world, you saw this kind of pattern everywhere. And what was really great about it is just really simple to get started with. So I think in the viewpoint of a developer coming uh, with no experience at all, looking at this versus React, you would think like this is, this is a lot easier than React. You don't have to learn maps. You don't have to put JavaScript inside your HTML. It just makes sense. It's all in one place. And I think for a lot of people, this options API is perfectly fine and it's a good way to use it. So I still like this. So the second way we're gonna talk about is using the composition API. And I'll show you an example of that. It's essentially the same thing here, except this time I'm using the setup. Uh, setup is very different than what you're used to here. So instead of separating out your data, your computed and your methods, you just have this one function where you can write all your code, all your reactive variables, and your methods, and then you return it here, right here in this section right here. It has some advantages where instead of having to write all this boilerplate, like typing out computed, and then having all these curly brackets everywhere, it's all in one place. So it makes it a little bit easier. You also have to learn a few new ways to create reactive variables. This ref is one of them. There's also something called reactive. For the most part, when I first saw this, I didn't love it. I thought it was a little bit more complicated than the options API. It does have a lot of uses and I could see how you can take a lot of these variables, you can create your own composable pattern. You can take these out and put them into their own utility functions or a, a what we call composable. And then you can import those in into the setup function itself and then take care of your logic inside there. So I could see this is kind of an interesting pattern because we're left to do whatever we want. We're not confined by this export default and having to put things in different areas. We can mix and match and it just makes a lot of sense. And when you get to larger view applications where you have a lot of different logic, it's really nice to be able to 
kind of choose your own way how you want to structure your, app and structure your app and how you want the composables and everything to interact with it. Now the disadvantage is, is that this could become really sloppy if you don't kind of follow a certain pattern. You could have your variables at the top and throughout the file, this could get very large if you don't kind of break it up into different pieces. It also, you have to learn this new computed, you have to import everything from Vue. So I'd say this is a great alternative, but not the most my most favorite way of handling this. Uh, the next one I'm gonna show you is to do it with the script setup, and I, that's what I feel works better for me. Okay, so I went ahead and uncommented it out here. One thing I need to do is add setup to the script tab get the top, and if I save it, try it out here, it's still working as I expect it. But you can see here, uh, what we don't, we actually get rid of the export default or export defined component completely. It removes even more a boilerplate code and it just kind of works. So I, I really like this, this right here because it's so simple to just put your import statements. It's basically taking everything inside the setup function and then just having it between the opening and closing script tags. So it feels a little bit like Svelte if you've ever used that. You still can run into the problems where if you don't structure your code correctly, it becomes a little bit more confusing, but it also gives you the advantages of using composables and it gets rid of this, same thing with the setup function. You no longer have to use this everywhere, T-I-H-I-S. I, I've definitely been using this on most of my projects. It's my preferred way to create Vue apps nowadays. If you are starting to learn Vue for the first time, I would suggest using the script setup way of creating your Vue apps and just structure them in such a way that it makes sense. So maybe for example, you put at the top of your script setup all your, obviously all your imports would go first, and then maybe all your variables, your reactive variables, then all your computer properties, and then all your methods, and then also to see if you're gonna be reusing any of this stuff. See if you can pull it out into its own composable so you can reuse it later. So the last way we're, we're gonna look at is kind of a hybrid approach. So I'm gonna get rid of the script setup at the top, and the way this works is, and I'm using the setup function, now I'm able to use kind of both at the same time. So I'm using the data function to have one of my data variables, this info one, but I'm using everything else is in the script setup. So I could see this being really handy if you're coming from a Vue 2 app and you're trying to convert it to a Vue 3 app. Instead of doing everything at once, you can add the setup function to your existing applications as you upgrade to Vue 3, start writing the logic in the setup function and instead of having it all inside the export default. And then when you have it all in the setup function, you can remove the export default and use the script setup. So it could be kind of a incremental way of upgrading your app. The one disadvantage of doing it this way is that you don't have access between both. So you can't necessarily, like I have this info right here, but I can't access this.info inside my script setup. So you can't really interact with it. And the same thing here, if I created this test function in data, I couldn't access the first name and last name because it's in my setup. So you would have to incrementally update it so that way all your variables that you want to interact with in the setup function are inside the setup function. So it's a little bit more tricky if you do this hybrid approach. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of it, but I haven't upgraded a huge up Vue 2 app to Vue 3 yet, so maybe some people would find this useful. One other little tidbit that some people miss is that you can also have multiple script setups in your app. So if let's say you did choose to use this setup API where you have script setup, you can have another script. So if I add in another script setup here, uh, you wouldn't want it two script setups, but maybe another script tag you can put an export default and then have something like inherit adders false or true. So that's one thing that as far as I can tell at the time of this recording, leave a comment if that this has changed. If you're purely using the script setup, you can't get the inherit adders method in there. So you have to essentially create another script at the bottom here. And actually it would have to also make sure I put in lang equals ts or otherwise it would throw me an error. But in this case, so if I come back over here Let's say I comment this out and then I put back this right here and I make sure I have script setup. Setup, I can spell it right. And I save it. You can see it's still working. There's no errors. If I look inside the console here, yep, nothing's error. But now I have two. I have the script setup at the top 
was lang equals ts, and then I have a second script right here. So you could sort of take both approaches, this hybrid approach, and combine it into two different script tags on your, on your file. So that's another little trick if you need to do that. Uh, I don't really love it. I only do it in specific instances like in Herod Hatters, but if you wanted to split the split it up, you're upgrading from view to two to view three, or you really love the options API and you're kind of hesitant to move the, to the setup function or script setup, then you may want to try this up, try this out. Okay, so that's all I got today. Let me know if that makes sense. Leave a comment below and take care.